All right, welcome back to Vulcan Deck Masters Week 3. Uh, well, actually, no, it's uh, Week 4. We're going on into the playoffs. We are going to be casting Life Code versus Kuvdon in a moment. Now, again, Kuvdon, a largely unknown player who got through the qualifier, and uh, so far, he's pretty much one of the most unexpected figureheads of this uh, later stage of the event. Yeah, I mean, it's always nice to see somebody roll through. Obviously, Cypher just throwing, I guess you could call it an upset, uh, Gara's way in our first best of five. Taking him out 3-1, very nearly 3-0, as well as the the patron warrior just wasn't working for him. But I like to see that. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm that underdog rooting guy. I love Life Coach, though. He's one of my favies, uh, which is, is a he? totally sane way to say that. But yeah. I mean, I don't know. I think Life Coach is one of the most well-known players for his consistency. And yep. he's so consistent, in fact, that his predictability is through the roof as well. So you pretty much expect him to open three decks. But there's a surprise, guys. Uh, apparently, Life Coach did not bring, and I repeat, not bring Handlock. Ooh. Yeah. Warrior, I mean, Druid, Hunter. Yeah. I, and that's one of those things. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll it back to poker one more time, as I am wont to do. Uh in my my hubris. Uh, Kuvdon is, I mean, coming in as an unknown player. If you haven't run into this guy, uh, you know, on, on ladder, you're not necessarily going to know what his play style is. Even if you do, you're not necessarily going to know what his constructed play looks like. So it's one of those things that when you're playing in a, especially, you know, sort of a one-on-one -on -one heads up kind of tournament in poker, a person you don't know is far more dangerous than a really good player that you know really well. So Kufdan's going to come into this, obviously, having watched Life Coach about a billion times. Life Coach is not going to have that, that same kind of information on the plucky Finn, who has made his way uh, all the way here into, uh, what are we calling these, the play-ins for the quarterfinals? We'll yeah, it's we're in the quarterfinals right now, but, to, well, we're going to get on to the quarterfinals as soon as Quarter, they quarter quarterfinals. Yeah. Exactly, it's like the... The octofinals? How do you say that? <laughs> like, what's the word? Yeah, um, it's, that's it should something. Be, I, yeah. Anyway, the the semi quarterfinals. If you want to go that deep into it, so it's just uh, like the lack of information is a really big deal. And life coach does scout his opponents. I saw him make a really um, awful scouting mistake recently, though, where he thought his opponent would, like there was a a mirror match mage in some tournament he scouted, and it turned out that the he he thought as a, like his opponent was going to be playing tempo mage because that's what he saw in the video, but he was actually scouting the other player, so mm -hmm. it was a really big deal. But it just goes to show that life coach does scout. So if he did scout, he does know what Kuvdon is likely to play. Although Kuvdon really hasn't revealed much because he's playing very very standard deck list. Um, all that life coach knows is that his opponent is going to be teching against him very hard, which I think explains why he didn't bring Handlock because it's somewhat easy to counter Handlock if you're bringing double BGH in every deck, and suddenly life coach is going to be going up against a Crucible um, with this Handlock deck. If you if you get teched against with that deck, it can be very devastating. Yeah, and I have to say, uh, we got Kuftan bringing Warrior Hunter Rogue. That Rogue is always one. It's it's been giving me a little <laughs> bit of pause lately. And he's going to be rolling it here in the first game. I, it's been kind of hard for Rogues to get steady traction lately. Obviously, uh, Oil Rogues, you know, the Rogue to go with. But uh, you know, people have been playing pretty well against it. Man, I saw BGH and Kuftan's deck again. He's been taking very against the opponents he knows he's going to be playing against. And I think Life Coach, knowing that Kuvdan's a massive techer, is going to be not playing his B his uh, handlock for fear of double BGH in every deck that Kuvdan plays. And if we saw one BGH, does Kuvdan run another one? Like, if we see a two BGHs in this match from Kuvdan, it will indicate an entirely intentional inclusion of tech cards against Life Coach. Yeah, and right now, he's going to be sitting on a nice little Violet Teacher Eviscerate Fan of Knives while we work our way through the spec bug mire and get a look at Harrison Jones over in Life Coach's hand. Not, it's pretty much uh, a given there up against the rogue, but Life Coach thinking about what he's going to be bringing here and might, you know, we'll see if he can uh, we'll see if he can unseat Kuftan. Life Coach hasn't had the easiest run through this. I mean, he ran into surrender uh, and, and God, just a soul crushing loss there. Uh, against surrender in the in the group stages where he just basically got drawn out against and uh, <laughs> surrender right, narrowly avoided. Really good. His yeah. tech was really good. Well, I mean, um, Harrison, like Harrison Jones in this matchup is good. You very rarely get a deadly poisoned up weapon or Tinker Sharpsword old weapon. You very often just get 
I'm <laughs> cooped up laughing. He's like, I'm gonna see a rope every turn, won't yeah. I? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's down. not just nothing. Are you? There's nothing to coin out. <laughs> well, you could play coin innervate. Yeah. Coin innervate, I guess. And but. really go massive. I mean, yeah. That would I mean, be you're a weak to bold, sap though. Bold kind of play, mean. yeah. Sap and yeah, then you then you've spent really deep for for not a whole lot of payback, or you could just end up getting. I mean, that shredder taken care of early before you can get too much built up to back it up. Uh, I mean, obviously, if you can get some good damage off of it early, great, great news. Uh, Kufdan not going to take quite so much time. Force of nature out for life coach, and he's back into life coach thinking mode. Yeah, I like uh, innervate shredder just because you can replay it next turn with a coin if need be. The problem is your turn four is looking a little weak if you do that because you still don't have a second four drop. Um, so it's, it's all about how much Life Coach really wants to push. I also like Innervate Coin Harrison Jones. That really forces the Rogue to slow down because they have to re-dagger, which again is a huge mana investment early on. And if you can deny that and draw yourself two cards, that's usually very, very convenient. Yeah, I think that's not a bad play right there. I, obviously, it's not necessarily going to be the one that Kufdan is, is thinking is going to come out this quickly. Um, you know, it, it was a fairly safe hero power play. Obviously, you got to imagine it's in there, but he did he did wind up with the innervate. Yeah, and he's going to go for it. There you go. Harrison. Harrison Jones on the field. And away goes the weapon. Out comes Thor. Saying, I mean, nice grabs there, too, in an ancient lore. Yeah, the only drawback with the the position that Kufdan's in is that he really doesn't have anything to handle the board. But his next turn is looking solid because if he goes for Vile Teacher Prep at this rate, that takes care of this Harrison Jones very nicely. He spawns a bunch of one ones, forces Life Coach to have type, uh, so he's still not early tempo loss. Wild Growth going to be the grab for Life Coach as he goes back to work doing the math. Yeah. Many turns ahead, basically, because there's no way he's thinking about what he has to do here. Like you have yeah. to, you have to wild growth. The question becomes, what next, right? Because yeah. on the following turn, he knows he's got five mana. All right, what do I play? Do the claw or Richard Drake? Okay, what does he play on four? Then he plays maybe Vile Teacher with a prep play. Okay, then what? So he's got to think many turns ahead um, in a position like this, no matter. So gonna go to face there, with five damage, and send it back over to Kufdan. And sap gonna be the grab right there. Class. Yeah, I don't think you're sapping this, are you? No, <laughs> he's already gotten good <laughs> value on it. I don't think you want to give it to him again. And uh, yeah, gotta prep out eviscerate and get him some friends on the board. Yeah, Kuvdan's hand is nurse. looking very, very good here. Yeah, sap gonna be able to take care of anything particularly scary that comes out. He's drawn into some nice spots. Lotheb obviously uh, gonna be feeling good. Uh, we're Azure Drake, really. Next time around, if he ends up in a really bad way, I guess he could sap Fan of Knives and start punching stuff with his face. But uh, don't think he's going to quite end up there. Life Coach uh, was some pretty nice five-mana plays himself, but his uh, he's got some hefty high-cost stuff at hand. He's not going to be able to get a lot of uh, a lot of quick one-turn value out of stuff for the moment. The worst thing, I guess, is Kuvdon is not forced to play a five-drop here. Like he can very happily sap and get another one-one and force Life Coach into having swipe even further. Um, the thing is that Kuvdon will not have a guarantee that Life Coach hasn't played swipe yet because until you have six mana, you rarely ever swipe a valid teacher. You really want to be able to swipe it, then hero power it right away. So Kuvdon thinking yeah. about whether he left the stove on while Life Coach figures out what he's gonna do. I know he, he left. He left his Kuvdon. <laughs> I want to live. I want to build a house out of that joke and live in it. That's what. That's okay. how much I like that joke. Oh man, it's such a bad joke. I think I'm becoming. It's you know what? I'm actually getting a kid in like seven months. That's probably it. That's, you got to be ready for that. The dad jokes are already creeping their way into your brain. Yeah, your genetics them, have man. been forever changed. Oh uh, god. Oh, man. So, Lotheb going to be the drop. He's got a couple of saps sitting around as well, so uh, he's going to wait on that one. You know what? I only Yeah, I was going to say, I only like it if you don't trade away anything else. Yeah. Keeps it. I mean, I, Kufdan obviously has had to play smart to get here. It, it's uh, an absolutely what? devastating field of competitors to get to like, this point in the competition. Look at this. What if Life Coach just goes for Shredder, Hero Power, kills the Vile Teacher, and then and what does Kuvdan do, right? 
Yeah, I mean, a couple of saps and, and a board that's just not really worth the cost. Uh, I mean, I guess you just drake and wait. Hope you, know. you pick up a second prep, I yeah. guess. Expectation not- or hope backstab even. Yeah, I mean, life coach. I mean, Kuftan. I mean, started out as a as a nice, quick hand uh, up against life coach's fairly slow play, but we're getting to a point where even though life car life coach still has some uh, some very very large numbers sitting in his deck, and he's ready to play now. Uh, Kuftan just hasn't been drawn into a whole lot of luck. The Lotheb play obviously going to keep any crazy spells from coming down this turn, but next turn not going to be that big of a problem, and Shredder might be it. Yeah, healing that Vile Teacher means you don't even have to find a swipe, so that gives you a lot more breathing room as a druid here, life coach. Comfortable position from his perspective. Looking at no big burst coming from the rogue, what he's most afraid of is probably something like a good blade flurry, but it's not even that crippling. Oh, wow. Vile Teacher gonna come out here for Kuftan. Give him a yeah. definite answer right there. A perfect answer, actually. Now, now he's forcing life coach into having that swipe again. Um, but this is a much, much trickier board to handle if you're life coach. Absolutely. You gotta really think about what you're gonna be throwing down and gotta get that five to the face as well. I mean, you were really hoping for something that was gonna need to be answered with that low thib. Obviously, nothing doing there. Double shredder sitting at the end of the deck now for life coach. Got seven mana and a whole lot of thinking to do this time, especially. Wouldn't be surprised to see just about anybody rope here. Uh, yeah, I like Emperor Thorsten a lot. I think Emperor Thorsten is the, your ticket to a possible comeback. Because he has to deal with it. Otherwise, you might he might just die from Force of Nature Savage War. So Kuvdon will be forced to deal with Emperor. Yeah. Um, and however he does that, you know, it's, it's going to feel like that in his mind. Yeah, I mean, he's got basically hmm. Wrath and the Drake or Wrath and a Shredder. Or Thorisan, and and you got to say that's that's pretty much your best one to throw out on the field. Like you said, it's going to mitigate the damage going straight to your face this time around. And there you go, Thorisan going to come out and send it back over for Life Coach. Uh, a little bit, I mean, you know, not a bad pick there because he's going to get great value out of it. Again, that high cost hand going to dip down just a little bit. Prep comes out here for Kufdon, and he's going to Azure Drake. See if he can find anything tasty. Blood Mage Thanos. Mm, you could go for Blood Mage. If you wanted, but the thing is, with this sap is going to give you an even better handle on the board. Um, and honestly, for life coach to pick this board up, he'd have to have a, like exactly double swipe, exactly double swipe. And if he had swipe, you bet he would have played it. So from Kuvdon's perspective, there's very little that can even handle this. Ooh, and Sylvanas, again costly and i mean there's some is there any wiggle room for life coach at this point there's not a ton he can throw out on the board that's going to be super convincing he's down to 13 health obviously right now we're sitting on b -b -b that's 14 on board and ready to go next time so life coach got to do something here so you could heal yourself with ancient of lore and try to cycle with wrath i mean you could try to cycle with wrath and pick up a swipe that would make you a bit you know on the lucky end of things um, play the Drake, hope for a swipe. That's also not a bad one, because then you deal 5 damage, and then you weaken... He's only down to an Azure Drake and a Vile Teacher, so he's only got 7 on board. Uh, 8 with a Dagger. Gonna keep him out of range for a little bit anyway, but Kuftan still... I mean, again, that uh, that high swing on cost for Life Coach is, uh, is turning out a little rough for him here. He's gonna pull a Wrath. He's gonna be able to spend his 1 cost, and... Go for the damage. Get it clear. Go for it twice. And then he's going to go ahead and clear the teacher away. Or no, he didn't have enough left. My bad. I can't count today. Picked up from Kuvdon, so that's just going to be game right away. Going to get himself a Tinker Sharp. The extra bit of damage. I mean, there, were, there was another of his rate. A sprint would have also probably found a lethal in some way. Prep sprint into SI7 would have done it. There's so many things that he could have found for that extra bit of damage. But, I mean, Life Coach were really not finding the cards he wanted as early as he wanted them. No, sir. Ends up high in the curve and uh, just had to wait it out against a quick rogue. And, I, you know, honestly, that gets the rogue out of the way for Kuftan. One of the... One of the uh, one of the classes that's been, you know, I mean, predictable to say to say the least, and one of the things that people have been able to tech against semi successfully. In this case, it's entirely possible that Life Coach did have something in hand somewhere to deal yeah. with it, but obviously the swipes never came, and he was just never able to uh, find what he needed. 
sometimes a uh, violet teacher can be a liability because you're trying to get a sharp sword oil, but I don't think again it's that big because they really can't remove those one ones if you spam them very effectively uh, without having to swipe. So you're forcing them to have one specific answer. Uh, to one of your own plays, and yours has a higher likelihood of just snowballing out of control, whereas theirs is just going to barely keep them alive, even if they do find it. So it's one of those things where I think Rogue is predictable, but at the same time, it doesn't stop it from being very, very effective. Yeah. Yeah, it's like you said, it's people are teching against it, but in that case, Kufdan got what he needed when he needed it. Life coach couldn't find an answer, and uh, really nicely played there by Kufdan. Again, the plucky Finn uh, showing some strength here as he goes up 1 0 over Life coach. Are we going to see the big names take a powder today as the, uh, the underdogs roll through? We'll see. I mean, so Life Coach still has his entire lineup, and Kufdan's down to Hunter Warrior, which again, I say he's down to that, but yeah. <laughs> it's not that bad. If you're looking at a possible Patron Warrior and uh, Mid Range Hunter, that is very good. And even Face Hunter could be good against Life Coach. He is very aggressive, and Life Coach tends to play slower decks that may not be teched in en enough against something like a very fast Face Hunter deck. Yeah, absolutely. Like we said uh, earlier, Life Coach had a little bit of trouble on the way into things. Uh, Kufdan not without his uh, his trouble. Life Coach ended up uh, number two in Group B, and uh, Kufdan was Group C's third place finisher. I mean, coming through uh, with some uh, some tenacious play, and uh, I mean, clearly deserves to be here. Some some smart play out of him here. And, and shout outs to his team, RCTIC Esports. I don't know him, but. Uh, Good on him for having Kufdan around. Yeah, he's, it's a nice play. Nice play, really got to yep. say. I mean, we'll see what Life Coach can do here. He's still sitting on Warrior, Druid, Hunter. Got all three uh, ready to go. But, uh, yeah, man. Well, I wonder if he's going to be you know, playing a BGH in every single deck. Considering the fact that he knows that Life Coach is likely to bring Warlock, knowing that beforehand, you probably do tech against it. Now, obviously, they're not going to be nearly as good now um, if he's put BGHs everywhere. But, yeah. Yeah, so uh, let's see. Uh, Keggers will let us know the status here. Taking a little while, obviously, uh, you know, getting games together. Not the easiest yeah. thing in the world these days. We'll take a look at it. And Life Coach taking a breather. He's going to rope on the time between games as well <laughs> because he's just. Oh, just typical Life Coach. No, no he's surprise. He's leaning back for a while. And I, I got to say, you know what? Not a bad idea from Life Coach, especially if you weren't happy with how that game turned for you. If you were just, I mean, again, we know Life Coach is a is a man of passion. Uh, he's a man of deep thought and a man of passionate uh, passionate lifestyle. So, I mean, if you're the sort of person who tilts and Life Coach can tilt, uh, it's not a bad idea to sit back and and give yourself a little bit of breather because you don't want to go into the next game mad. You want to really think about where did I slip up there? What can I do about it? And we will find our way into this next game there as uh, the rope ticks out and Life Coach rolls on into game two. Down well, one to Kufdan. And there's a BGH in that deck. There's a, Kufdan, absolutely so a BGH. I think he was expecting Handlock. He must be a little bit disappointed by that. A little bit disappointed. Man, well, Li Life Coach really good, making a good call, though, not bringing Handlock, knowing that Kufdan is so heavy into teching against specific players. But now Kufdan really, you know, targeting Life Coach's Handlock is not going to really bear its fruits. And we'll see exactly if that Grim Patron is going to be fine enough. But that pickup from Life Coach with a double ramp hand, that's pretty yeah. crazy. While growth innervate, Frothing Berserker going to be the grab for Kufdan there as we once again... Fix our spec bugs. I know you guys probably get sick of being reminded, but we just like to let you know we keep you status updates because we love you. And oh, wow. Whoa. Innervate, innervate, so, wrath. Something just lit up. <laughs> Life coach going to be comfortable in the curve this time around. Yeah, actually, this is going to be even better. For boom, because of whirlwind execute, just completely shutting you down. Playing this and then innervate on a Dr. Boom can lose you the game if he has uh, the answers. Because you're still keeping the second innervate on the backup. Yes, indeed. And ugh, it's going to be scary when it drops. Kufdan going to get his Acolyte of Pain out. Look at Rage and send out Rage. Yeah, that sends a message. I'm desperate and I need exactly a thousand cards. Savage roar for life coach as well. 
I mean, again, if he had trouble drawing into things the first time, he's getting himself a very, very comfortable hand here right at the outset of game two. Kufdan rummaging through the deck to see so, what he can find. I've got a question. Do you ever innervate Dr. Boom, then innervate Wrath to kill the Acolyte to make sure that your Shredder stays alive? That's kind of like the one reason I could see for playing the innervate. The second it's, one, that is. Yeah. <sighs> That's a rough one because it's, I mean, you could, he's you set up to pop it. And if you could just force it, I mean, obviously he played what looks like a bit of a draw play there. He's like, I need something. So, I mean, it might not be that bad of a, a bad of an idea because you're going to exploit that. You're going to force him to answer the board twice over uh, to get your damage out of the way. And yeah. you've done at the moment doesn't, I mean, in decent odds, he doesn't necessarily have a good answer. I mean, Whirlwind Execute again is still the same fear living in Life Coach's mind, but how scared are you of it to the point of using your second Innervate on this? I mean, that's a big thing, because those Boom Bots would die uh, to the Whirlwind and then possibly kill the Acolyte. I mean, there's a lot of card draw here for Kuvdon if he wants it. Yeah, no mission Venters sitting around, Battle Rage. So he starts by trying to pick up the Execute from here. Gotta get double but, Death's Bite. Yeah, he still <laughs> has to try again. Not bad, but not what he wants. Going to go into the 1-1, one, one, which, again, uh, not necessarily your ideal play here, but he needs the card draw. Yeah. I mean, if you go into the 1-1, one, one, you could draw two cards off of it, which, in this case, would actually overdraw him. Oh, wow. Yeah. Ooh, so he just... might get overdrawn. Warsong Commander, not a bad He might, he might get overdrawn. overdrawn. That, that is... Oh, my... Execute burns into dust. Kufdon, what a what? Life coach, life coach, happy with that play though. Oh, <laughs> Kufdon, Kufdon. oh man. <laughs> you know this is Kufdon the reason why I watch. Rope. Oh. <laughs> oh, this is the reason I watch this game. You know what? Oh. This is <laughs> this oh, is no. to me what the unstable portal was to you. And I think there might be a lethal here with Drew the Claw, Innervate, oh, Savage man. Roar. I haven't even bothered looking. But this is so beautiful. <laughs> if you if you go it, rummaging through the garden for roses, don't be surprised when you get pricked, man. That that hurt him bad, and Kufdon feeling it. He's only got five damage though. Like he's gonna be five off lethal if he goes for Drill the Claw Innervate. Do you ever not go for it though? I got. I mean, if you're life coach, you just watch that execute burn. Yeah. I see, you press the advantage now. You've seen him drawing. You know what he was drawn for. When you watch that execute burn, you're like, oh. okay, like it's not even a greedy play. I wouldn't say it's it's a it's a fully reasonable play, and he's gonna do it. And the coup done is just, I, I, I <laughs> you know, I saw Tiddler Celestial um, donating a game to his opponent in the recent Archon Team League, but this is this is more than a donation. Oh man. My hand is full. Unstable ghoul and a taunt does, goes into the garbage. Does he, do die, just... does he die to the boom bot? Okay, he doesn't at least. All right. Oh. <laughs> He's only oh. one off. Oh, no. Face right into the boom. Koopdon <laughs> shrugs, looks at the ceiling, and goes to game three as life coach. Oh, man. <laughs> life coach was like, what was that kid doing? And that kid was like, what was that kid doing? Oh, Koopdon. You know what, though? Oh, Life Coach man. says on his stream that he doesn't accept donations. I know for a fact that it's false he now. <laughs> he just did. He's going to buy himself a yacht with that one. That was massive as Life Coach. <laughs> Kufdon going to even it up 1-1. One, one. Oh, on the back of just an execute burn. And Life Coach, I mean, again, you saw the card draw. He was playing card draw blatant and open. So when you watch the execute burn, you just got to go. I mean, oh. it's, it, it was, I saw it coming, and I was really scared for him that the execute would just get pulled out, but... Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, and I, you gotta be kicking yourself, too, because you're like, I pulled two. If it was the first one, I'm golden, but it wasn't. It was the second one. I got put in the dumpster. Oh, man. Oh, that's, you know, when I turn up for this, I feel like I catch some very, very interesting... Uh, <laughs> interesting <laughs> games, very, right? Interesting yeah. games, yeah. Oh, man. All right, so it's looking like a mid-range Hunter mirror match. So both players pulling out their Hunter deck. Um, Life Coach has one of this Druid, so that's out of the way for him. We, uh, you know, a lot of people do say the Druid is right now one of the... Um, 
you know, amongst the the few worst classes in the game, we could say shaman, priest, and let's say druid at the bottom. Those tend to be in the Archon Team League some of the classes that get played the least. Uh, and the interesting thing is, it's still a good class, but it suffers so much from so many matchups that you don't want to play with it too much. Like you really want to get one win with it, let's say, and just get your ramp once and be done with it. It's not a, a class that you'd go back to if you're given the choice. So Hunter's Mark, Unleash the Hound is going to be the redraw there as he holds on to Animal Companion. And um, Life Coach in a pretty comfy little curve here is coin out the Creeper for Kufdan. And, I, you know, I got to worry that Kufdan, he was still looking pretty pained coming into this match. Uh, you know, it might have been a, not a bad time to take a breather for Kufdan. Uh, hopefully he doesn't let it get to him. Uh, you know, you, you got to play optimal play, especially when you're going against life coach. Uh, I, I think he's still, I mean, you still, he's got that look like, man, oh, that sucked. So he's got to let that go and get into this game now instead of living in the last one. That was fun to watch from a viewer it perspective. That's all yeah, that from there. a viewer perspective, that's, I mean, let's say it was life coach getting one back for the draws surrender got in uh, week two, I think it was. <laughs> You're right. Like, that's pretty much how life coach must feel. He's like, you know what? I've given, I've had games taken away from me. This is kind of a, I got a little one situation. Back. That is the karmic balance. That is the most beautiful thing about Hearthstone. Wow. All right. So yeah. life coach here picking up perfect animal companion. Could have picked up Huffer or Misha, both of which would have maybe forced him to use Hunter's Mark early, depending on how he felt. Um, but now, oh wow. Okay. So Freezing Trap Web Spinner forces no Houndmaster play. He's probably playing around Houndmaster. Animal Companion would have otherwise been somewhat okay. He's definitely playing around that because otherwise it might make the Leoc kill a Leoc or a Misha. Yeah, Life Coach is going to get a Freezing Trap of his own, which uh, gives him a little bit of time to sit on it if he wants to come up with a way around. can always just Freezing Trap, shoot him in the face. Always feels good. Or use Leoc to uh, let Kufdan roll the dice. Uh, it worked out okay for him earlier on. <laughs> Not in that last game, though. Life Coach probably looking at his notes about Kufdan's previous scouting. So he's like, what traps did he play in his previous Hunter decks? Maybe I can figure it out. I'll tab over to Google Docs. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Got he's you. got like 17 Google Docs, one for each player with the frequency. And he's like, you know, he doesn't play explosive traps, so I'm just going to play the Juggle Panther. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> there you go. It's perfect info right there. Life coach every time, 100%. Hunter's Mark going to come out for Koof Dunn now, and he's going to play. That's a great pickup. That's a great pickup for him. Leoc, yeah, good value for money there as he's going to get a card back for his trouble. He's going to get the beast for the second time this tournament that I've seen. Did somebody draw the beast, or were they just straight up running the beast? No, no, no. Nobody is running the beast. Nobody runs the beast. No, no, I have never seen once in my life anybody. I okay. mean, I have seen it like Challenge Stone or something. Oh man, that'd be crazy. Somebody actually yeah, putting the beast in their deck. Work it in there, high main and the beast. That's the that's the future. The beast is making a comeback. So yeah, somebody grabbed that up earlier. I want to say it was Trump ended up with it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, weeks it's happened before ago. from yeah. Web Spinner, but it's the Deck Masters is the tournament of the beast, man. That's the way it goes. Kill Command sitting in deck here for Life Coach and thinking about what to do. He's staring down a big pig. He could be a big pig too. Oi. And there's the Unleash. And some secrets. Back in the hand. And that was a good play from Life Coach, really just knowing that his opponent was probably not playing explosive. If he had any info that it was going to be explosive trap, he would have never attacked here because he was going to lose uh, both the Unleash and the uh, Panther. But this Hound here is really good at triggering traps. So, Kufdan going to hover over the beast. He's waiting. Next turn. Ooh, that bad boy's coming out. Forget the high main. <laughs> hmm. Beast on six every time. Haunted Creeper going to be the play here and get his other spinner up. Send it back over. Panther on the board for Life Coach. He's going to pull the other Unleash. Actually, that's great for him. He can wipe the board if he wants it. He pops the Creeper and then just goes 
for the Unleashed play. Alternatively, you could play high main now and get the dibs on it, because one of the strongest plays you can make uh, in this matchup is to play the high main first. The thing is, with mm. Hunter's Mark, uh, you could use your Hounds to kill his high main and then play your own. So there's a good yeah, argument for that. Yeah, because that Hunter's Mark. And is Kufdan going to be waiting for I mean, I'm, obviously his, his hands run a little bit light here. He's not going to be able to play around it for much longer if he gets something he wants to silence He's got the Iron Beak Owl out there, but uh, I mean, the high main would be the one to throw a silence on. So for Life Coach, might be the best way to go. Obviously, he's going to take his time. We know that. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely taking his sweet time. I think it's all right to play it this way. I mean, there's really no reason uh, to be that afraid. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't hurt you too much. Obviously, you're going to miss his. Uh, the high main's little friends who come to snack on the body. Houndmaster Ooh. there. Okay, wait. Things are getting a little bit different here now that the Houndmaster is picked up because it actually curves in with the owl very nicely um, to the point where you can actually deal with this high main very effectively. Gonna send the spinner back. Gets that trap proc, and now he knows he's basically got a clear board here. Silence from the owl. And is it gonna be the Houndmaster on the other side of it? Yeah, you double trade and then play the Houndmaster with the Owl to challenge the Hyena. Again, this is opening you up to unleash the Hounds, but I think you're not playing around the second one yet. Uh, but for Life Coach, this is not looking too bad. It's just that he's got to pick up something really solid in the next few turns, and that might actually be worth it. Iron Bee King here and unleashing. Problem is, if you spawn too many Hounds and keep them, then his unleash is better. Yeah, and he's still got uh, Savannah Highmane and the Beast sitting around, ready for action any old time. Iron Beak Owl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, might be the look here. I mean, again, there's not a lot of great value out of anything else in the rest of his hand. So he is going to play Iron Beak Unleash as, again, just not a lot of not a lot of other room there. You don't really want to spin the kill command on that. You want to hold on to that and see what else you can get for it. So Unleash out and Life Coach trying to decide where to send the party. He's made the decision on the play. Now he needs to decide. I mean, that's an interesting thought process. Do you play before you decide where you're going to throw the damage? Do you? Uh... Life coach very often does. Like he knows. Sometimes you do it when you know that there's a play you can't not make. Ooh, and Hunter's Mark. Yeah, this Ooh. is perfect. He's going to keep his uh, Panther alive. Based on the previous lines of play that Kudan's taken, he doesn't have the answer, or he would have used it. A quick shot would have been played already. So it's pretty obvious. That this panther is going to be able to deal a bit more damage in the next few turns. Oh, wow. Freezing trap, a nice grab for Kufdan. And he's got a Savannah high main. He's got the beast. I don't yeah, think we saw that Trump never got a good turn for the beast. And Kufdan is going to concede it. long before the game's actually over. He knows there's no way he's going to come back. Because this freezing trap couldn't actually be played at the same time as a six drop. So it's a, a net tempo loss because you have to play the web spinner with it. Uh, and without any healing and the other hunters so far ahead, you have no answer for that panther. It's not looking too good. Yeah. So, Life Coach going to go up 2-1 there. As Kufdan just, I mean, couldn't find the draws himself there. Ends up with the beast. Why don't we ever get to see him make it to the field? Poor beast. Oh, it never. I mean, when you have, like, think about it. A high main yeah. is yeah, basically a beast that yeah. doesn't <laughs> give your opponent a 3-3. Three, three. It's, uh, it's kind of how it feels very frequently. So, we'll see how this goes. But again, you know, Kufdan to the inventor of the Sunshine Hunter. You know, there's no surprise. It's a... Uh, it's, uh, Life Coach knows his Hunter play. He knows it. Gonna run the Hunter this time up against the Warrior for Life Coach. And Houndmaster and a couple others that uh, the spectator situation is not gonna let us see. There we go. Eagle Horn, Bow, Animal Companion, and both Houndmasters in hand for Kufdan as Grim Patron comes out early for Life Coach. I mean, the Coin Animal Companion is very... If you pick up one of your big minions, because if you can, if you can protect it, you're going to be in a good spot. Yep, freezing trap and, for Kufdan. Like, especially with the Houndmaster. I mean, only one of them dies to fiery war axe, which is the Huffer. What now? And if he plays Acolyte, you can Eagle Horn Bow it. No, I like Kufdan's hand a lot here. If I'm the Hunter, I mean, it's missing a two drop, obviously, but yeah. Yeah, that's a pretty comfortable start here. Is uh, double patron for life coach gonna? You know, definitely give him some longevity if it uh, if it runs deep on this one, Life Coach, with the unstable ghouls to make sure that he can get there as well. So, I mean, it could really be uh, an interesting 
interesting little play here is uh, those patrons. Going to be a scary thing indeed. We know Unleash the Hounds is sitting heavy in Kufdon's deck, and that can put you in a dangerous spot. Or, if you're Cypher, it can run you through a game pretty nicely and get you to a, a narrow, uh, narrow victory before the patrons can do anything. Unstable Ghoul there for Life Coach. He's going to send it back over. Draw is going to be Unleash. So I guess you play the bow here. More animal companion risk getting hover and then getting punished for it. The yes, Surge just going to go ahead and take care of business there. Take single damage, clear that away without having to worry about losing anything in the ensuing destruction. Battle Rage for Life Coach and another unstable ghoul in hand. Might Simple be, uh, ghoul's mediocre here. Going up against the bow right away, I think is useless. Um, but he still has a really good follow up considering he's got the death bite uh, on turn four that he can kill anything with, really, including Misha or Leok. And the Grim Patron as a follow up, going to also get a copy of it off the trigger of the death bite. So Life Coach's curve is not looking too bad. Yeah, armor up. Gonna keep him um, keep him plenty healthy if he decides to go that route. Most likely. And life coach gonna take his time though. I mean, again, this is one of those. He's got to be especially fresh off of a game against Kufdon's Hunter. You got to be running the possibilities here and make sure because again, he's gonna curve in nicely, but he's got to make sure that he doesn't put himself in a situation where he ends up dragging behind. Uh, and his patrons aren't going to quite flesh out the way that he wants to. Or, you know, he could be waiting on some draws as well. In the latter part of the game, he is going to send the unstable ghoul out. So um, he's forcing his opponent to kill it. Um, you know, I'm trying to figure out what he's trying to play against here. Like around maybe not giving his opponent the ability to get another draw. Uh, I mean, not another draw, but another charge off the bow. Is probably yeah. the only reason why he did that. Because he knows he's going to be able to handle pretty much anything that comes on turn 3 from Kuvdon with a Death Spite. Yeah, and there's the Death Spite, and he cleans it up. You know, the life trade obviously going to swing in Kuvdon's favor for the moment. Life Coach going to be thinking about the longer game here. Hunter's Mark outpiloted Shredder going to be dropped for Kuvdon mm. onto the board. There, and, there have oh, been well. disasters with Shredders being popped after you play a Grim Patron. But Absolutely. we'll see. The thing is, very typically here, if, let's say, an Anoyoshuan comes up, it's pretty much heaven for life coach. Yeah, I think this is a bit more stable, because your, your following turn can be done with Patron and the Whirlwind, which is going to make it so the Shredder's a bit less of a liability for you. I like this Eagle a lot. Humbo. Yeah, going to give him a really comfy spot to sit there. Got a freezing trap up and just put some hurt on. Yeah, and this is a, this is pretty much the position that you want to be in if you're cooped on. Those Houndmaster is not doing much, but once you pick up any beast, could be an RMB Cowley, even getting a 3 2 a taunt. Uh, I mean, a 4 3 a taunt is pretty solid, even against a warrior fire. Absolutely, especially with this kind of a life lead. Uh, it's sitting, you know, 28 to 17. We know patrons and berserkers can turn things around very, very quickly, but uh, at the moment, life coach, you know, he's kind of sitting and waiting. He's, obviously, he's got his whirlwind. Uh, if he wants to start hanging out in that neighborhood right away. But Life Coach, he does like to slow play from time to time. Kuftan in a pretty comfortable spot. Uh, you know, as long as he can just keep building on it, make sure Life Coach doesn't get a board out in front of him. He does have Houndmaster and Unleash, so he's got some answers there. But uh, yeah, it's kind of on Life Coach here to set the pace of what Kuftan's going to be doing across the next couple turns. I mean, what do you? Uh, you normally have the, You have to play patron. I mean, I can't imagine you would not. It, it's too dangerous not to. You might not want to trigger. I mean, attack into that. Uh, that shredder. Doesn't so, do. Yeah. Gonna get some damage. I mean, not a bad way to go there, as the death bite and the whirlwind. Gonna add some friends and put some damage onto that berserker. Mad Scientist grab for Kufdan and a lot of damage on board to be dealt with. Yeah, the thing is, if Kufdan leaves all these minions up, he's got to be scared of an Armorsmith coming out, right? Like, that's where you start getting really uneasy about uh, playing Unleash and not trading them all away. That's the one thing that's really dangerous, is if an Armorsmith a wind or, um, uh, you know, any, any effect, any AoE effect that he's got, then you're going to be in trouble. And those hounds could spawn patrons. You have to deal with that frothing unless you kill all the patrons. 
Yeah. And uh, yeah, Kuftan, I mean, drawing into a mad scientist is not exactly the sort of out that you're, you're trying to look for here. Uh, obviously, you're going to get good value if you send the hounds over and uh, do a little work onto that frothing. I'm going to switch him up to one so that he gets maximum value out of the hounds. Yeah, and, and this is where Armor Smith is really scary. This is where Armor Smith is really scary to you as a hunter player. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely a, I hope I can finish yet. the job quickly enough. He's going to get Cruel Taskmaster. Yeah, but there's no ch there's no Warsong Commander, so he needs Warsong Commander and Armor Smith exactly, pretty much, to do anything here. Yeah. And with, what do we got sitting on board? Ten sitting on board for Kuftan. He's going to obviously be able to clear some stuff away here. Wants to draw and see what he can do. He's thinking whether or not he wants to draw an extra card by triggering Freezing Trap first with one of the 3-3s. Three threes. But... Gonna go ahead and send the slam over into the Mad Scientist. We'll there's nothing but freezing. Alright, yeah. there's nothing but freezing. Second trap under it. Might be the Snake Trap. Uh-oh. Knife Juggler comes down. And Snake will be triggered, giving him more patrons if there is a snake. We have to assume... Wait, is it explosive? That wouldn't be too shabby. It's it explosive. is explosive trap. Alright, turns out there's... It can't really be anything else. But again, no armor smith makes this a bit weird, but Life Coach is looking at a pretty good health total at the moment. Um, but there's 5-7 damage on this bonus board. He just needs to lose 4. That's going to do it. Quick shot is exactly what Kukdon wanted to pick up here. That or an abusive sergeant. Yep. So, life coach sitting and looking. And a really good grab there. I mean, that's just, that's what you need. Two left, sends it back over, and Armorsmith. Oh my there. god. So one mana off lethal for Kuvdon. That's giving Life Coach the opportunity to climb back in. If he picks up Warsong Commander. Oh, he's going to get slammed. This is a nightmare for In a rage. Kuvdon. Acolyte of Pain. <laughs> you know, the Armor Smith slam rage is looking really good. We'll see. Can Life yeah, he Coach. He does have a lot of damage. Oh, Can Life Coach stick it? Yeah, I mean, it's. it's Oh, it's a lot of work to build on when you got two left. Kuvdan stretching and waiting. <laughs> Kuvdan has absolutely uh, no desire to deal with this armor smith. It's just, it's so obvious. Fiery oh, war axe grab. Oh, man. It's a, a great grab for life coach. That is uh, do you gonna... enrage your own patrons just to get that bit of extra armor? I mean, you kind of have to, right? Yeah. If you're in life coach's, you know, shoes here. Explosive, gonna give him a ton of armor. Oh man, lose <laughs> oh, man. two health, gain five. And there's the inner range. He's gonna beef up, it's gonna kick it up to eight. And there you go, ten total. Sorry, eleven. He's not done, everything's not done playing. Eleven total there. Knife okay. juggler out, uh, Kuftan. <laughs> Pushing face. I mean, Kuvdan's to... got to push for face as much as he can. The drawback yeah. is he's only got a hero power that gets contested by the opponents, and whenever a whirlwind effect is picked up from life coach, it's going to be a problem. So if you can get the second quick shot, I think you might just be close enough to get the win. Yeah, I mean, it's a race you think you're sitting pretty on. Two health left on life coach. And then comes the armor smith and just makes your life entirely complicated. He's got him down to six total and sends it back over. Kufdan just hoping nothing ne else. Needs a kill commander or a quick shot, man. If he picks up either of those, he's got the game. BGH grab for life coach. Not necessary, but, you know, more friends you can bring to the party if the patrons are to be believed. And plenty of damage to go around there. Kuvdan with three outs, possibly just two, because not everyone runs two quick shots. In fact, it's usually not done. Um, this is this is the draw for Kuvdan. This is it. This is the draw that might determine whether or not he's able to equalize with Life Coach. Big grab for Life Coach there. He's going to put the fiery war axe on and prepare for battle. 
Eight health left for Kufton. He's evened it up. Acolyte of Pain on the board. Life Coach knows he's just waiting to see what goes. It's going to be Savannah High Main. He's going to try... Oh, wait, he had lethal with the bow. That's right. It gave him actually the extra two damage. Yeah. Because there was no more yeah, armor I... gain. Yeah. What is lethal, man? What is eight? What, what is... What, 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 what is... What, does three plus three plus two do eight? I mean, I'm not even I sure think it, gets, it approaches eight without actually reaching it. If my physics okay. are uh, correct, <laughs> uh, <laughs> physics Hearthstones turns out. Yeah, man, uh, that's what we do. It approaches eight without actually ever reaching it. So, uh, what's the gravity factor for hunters a, going face? Uh, two two. It's a ratio of two to two, trending towards five. As uh, Kufdan gets one, man, just by the edge. How we forget that eagle horn bow is in there. No, I saw it. I just figured Life Coach was gaining extra armor, but he wasn't at all. Oh, yeah, yeah. He didn't grab anything. Miscalculated the minus two plus five again from the second trap. There was no, there was none played. This, this simple math is deviously complex if you look at the wrong direction at the right time. Fiery warrants well, yeah. for Cooper. If you don't have the data, for you, for you. you're not doing yeah. much. All right, so coin flip. And when I say coin flip, I mean patron versus patron. These matches can come down to multiple swing plays, but I think more often than not, they're decided um, when Emperor Thorson gets played. Oh, wow, that's a pretty good card here for Life Coach. Yeah. Harrison I mean, Jones. a good one is you've got Warrior and Rogue on that side, so Harrison Jones not going to be uh, not going to be too shabby here with Death Spite and Fiery War Axe sitting in the hand of Kufdan. Uh, there'll be some uh, plenty of opportunities for Harrison to come out and put it in a museum. A few people have been playing um, the Harrison Jones in pretty much every deck nowadays because of the prevalence of Patron. So yeah. really, and the thing is, in this matchup, if you can get Death Spite to trigger on a board that you like, you know, you kill the opponent's Death Spite with your Harrison and get it on a board that you have a Patron on, or even an Armor Smith or an Acolyte of Pain, you're getting even more value out of his Death Spite than sometimes he does. Gonna be a quick fiery war axe and punch right in the chops there for the acolyte and acolyte of pain drawn for Kufdan as he clears away life coaches. <laughs> life coach is thinking Just to himself. Gonna replay. Why I've got double acolyte? How do you have the fiery war axe? <laughs> he's just gonna have to watch. What is this happen. nightmare? Not happy with the value he's getting off of those, but he'll get some draws nonetheless. And uh, Acolyte of Pain, as if to taunt Life Coach. Yeah, you just just say, hey, I, I have one too. What about From you? Finland with love. Death's Bite play for Life Coach. And yeah, he's I think this is a the good favor. Bite. Really sick Death's Bite here from Life Coach. It's going to allow him to get good triggers very early on the minions that he wants to have it on, but Kuvdon's picking up Emperor for next turn, and he gets the double draw guaranteed from the Acolyte. This is going to be insane. Oh boy, life coach. It's a value trade, but the value this time in Kuvdon's favor. Gnomish Inventory there for life coach, so he's going to have a little bit of extra card draw in hand, and that 3-2 is going to make life coaches stay even where I mean, that's just not a great value proposition there. Yeah, execute the almost... Is tempting. It's a play that you see done a lot in pair, like patron mirror matches, because denying the draw is very often more relevant than anything else you could do. So I wouldn't be surprised if we just saw the execute on the acolyte here. Armor Smith, not a bad grab for life coach. He will execute and send it back across. Kufdan's turn, and we'll see what he pulls up. Manages to grab an execute of his own. Nice little, nice little pulls for him here early on. Death's Bite is going to be the play. Or is it? Nope. He's changed his mind. I mean, this Death's Bite is much better than Emperor Thorson here, I think, most of the time. Because um, if you play Emperor here, you're really not doing anything with it. Like, the cards you're getting, the cost of reduced isn't and you're really care for. Yeah, no patrons sitting around. And, uh, does have War Song Commander, both of them now. No Mission Inventor for Life Coach if he wants to just keep drawing. Life Coach's got an op the option of playing his Grim Patron and getting an infinite amount of them. And the cool thing is, as long as those patrons are up, Kuvdan can't really justify using his own Death's Bite at any point without guaranteeing an entirely, a complete board clear. So he'd have to pick up the executes, all of them. 
um, to do anything. It's a strong board control here for Kufdan. He's going to grab a BGH and not going to get a whole lot of help out of that. So he's going to just have to sit on this death spite and think about what he's going to throw down. And he doesn't have any crazy good answers for this. But really, you can't just be staring down 12 damage thinking, you know what? If I let that sit for two turns, I'll just die. So Kufdan going to have to come up with a plan. So execute is likely going to be a part of that plan because you really can't let all of that those minions live. There's absolutely no way that you like you could even play execute on the three two let's say or the three one uh, the three two that is and then you could play emperor Thorson. Whoa, is he going to try to flood the board to then get a perfect whirlwind to sp stop them from uh, respawning? I want to live in that world, but it, maybe, maybe we do. Uh, does he know that they reproduce? Does he does he know that they just copy themselves? Because that's what? kind of what they do. That's life kind of what coach. They do. Take it a sit back here. And that, that's kind of what they do is kind of fill up the board when you AOE them. It's I mean is I'm. <laughs> that can't be right. <laughs> I'm co yeah. I'm coming around on an idea. Give me a couple minutes. Kufdan realized that his math potentially worse than our math at the end of that last game as he puts life coach basically right where he started well done Kuf done concede. with the concede here doesn't want to see this game go through um probably confused by his own play um after the fact but it happens yeah. i guess sometimes you don't really think it through too much yeah i mean you're staring down 12 damage worth of uh worth of patrons before whatever life coach is going to play next time around you're you're trying to do that math as quick as you can. Whatever he was running through is his game plan there. He didn't end up on it. I mean, clearly he had a game plan there vis-a-vis -vis Whirlwind, Execute, um, and Death Spike. Yeah, I don't think he was. Like, Life Coach was yeah. really uh, puzzled by that last turn. But Yeah, I goofed I mean, he on thought... clearly puzzled as well. He was like, something, let me do my math real quick. And he, he got something. He got some, he forgot to carry a one, maybe, but... Uh... Yeah. yeah. Well, it turns out uh, Life Coach is going to take the series over Kuv Don, so there's not going to be any upset with the uh, underdog beating the established. So Life Coach is going to be able to secure his place against uh, Naria a bit later, I believe. Kalento is going to be fighting Syph against Life Coach, and then there will be uh, semifinals with the two winners of those matches. So again, we have three more best of fives going on today. In the meantime, guys, we'll be taking a short break. Yeah, before we go... Take a, take a quick second and uh, check out Vulcan, everybody's favorite uh, fantasy esports site, and head on over to squarespace.com slash deckmasters to check out Squarespace. Great place to make websites super easy if you're into that sort of thing, and if you're not, do it anyway, because I said, go check it out. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> 